Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are going to expand our understanding of relevance and faithful representation and the elements that make up these two fundamental characteristics. So let's get started here by reviewing a little bit about relevance and faithful representation. So at a minimum, we said that financial statements should have relevance and faithful representation. When we talked about relevance, we said that information has little value if it's not relevant to the shareholder. They want to know that the information can make a decision in their decision-making process. So don't give me the fluff. Just give me what information I need to make appropriate decisions on your organization and whether or not I should invest or not invest in your company. Faithful representation tells us a little bit about making sure that the financial statements are not necessarily the Instagram of social media where we post the, only the best things that's happening in an organization, but we should be posting things that reflect what actually is happening in the organization. So does it tell us the true story of the organization or is it giving us fluff in order to mask what's actually happening within its walls? So these are the two fundamental characteristics that we need from financial reporting or financial statement. So let's dive deep here in these two things here. Relevance tells us information that we uh, that we give to external users must aid in the decision that external user uh, external decision makers need to make but we don't need to give them all the details of the organization. So when we think about financial statements, we don't necessarily want to give them everything because they don't need everything. And we also don't want to give them everything because that could give off trade secrets or information that we don't want our competitors to know. So we want to give them just enough information that they can make a decision, but not enough to then expose what's happening with our organization to our competitors. Now, when we say what relevance is, we've got three elements that signify what element, what relevant is. These are the three key components or aspects to relevance. The first one here is predictive value. The second one here is conformatory value. And then we have our materiality. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. So we'll start with predictive value. Does the information help the users predict the future company's future cash flows and or other financial data. So it's relevant when we can take the data, do our analysis, and maybe project what cash flows would happen next year, what net income might happen next year. Is it a guarantee? Definitely not a guarantee. But does it help us get to some type of range that can give us confidence that we should or should not invest in the company. So do they give us enough information to be able to project that? If they don't, then their financial statements are worth really nothing to us because we can't rely on them to help us make decisions. Now, remember that past performances does not guarantee future performances, but if everything is correct, we should be able to predict with some level of confidence that something's going to happen the way that it should happen. The next element to uh, uh, relevance is conformatory value. Does the information being provided on the financial statements confirm prior expectations the external user has? So what we mean by that is, you know, I'm going to make a projection today that the company's going to do this in 20x2. And then we go to 20x3. So 20x2 is now over. Was my projections correct? If they were correct or within, you know, a tight range, then we know that we can rely on that their um, financial statements are something that we can rely on because they are giving us information that is helping us understand future op opportunities with the uh, investment in that company. Now, predictive and conformity value kind of work side to side. So we need the predictive value to predict, and we need the confirmatory value to be able to confirm our predictions to make sure that we're in the right track.
The last one here is materiality. We'll talk about this as a cost-effective thing later on, but does the financial statements contain all the information that could affect a user's judgment? So did we leave anything that actually could change, I guess, someone's investment in a company? That's material. We do not want materials items to be omitted from the financial statements. However, we don't need to nickel and dime the numbers. So what we mean by that is, let's say you go out and you buy a home. So you buy a home and you're looking through the home and everything looks right. Um, but the seller knows, for instance, that um, the pipes have been leaking and they were basically bandaged up just so that they can sell the home. Is that something that would have changed your mind and maybe buying that home? Probably, right? You would want to know that, but if they don't tell you, then you wouldn't know. But should you know, would that have changed your thought in maybe your negotiations? Would that change your thought that um, you should buy the home? Probably. Okay, let's flip the situation. You go buy a home and the uh, the owner accidentally painted on the grass a, a line that he thought was going to be um, maybe like you can't really see it, but now you can see it. Is that material? Probably not. Why? Because you're going to probably have to cut the grass and then it's going to go away or it's going to fade with the grass. So it's not really that material. So if you didn't tell me about it, wouldn't know. So in that case, maybe that information is not material. So we want to make sure that we include material information that affects the decision of an investor, but not necessarily put things that eh, doesn't really matter because it won't really affect their decision making process when it comes to uh, the company's financial statement and investment. So that's materiality. Now, when we talk about faithful representation, as a reminder, this refers to the ability of for external users to be able to rely on the information presented in the financial statement and that it has everything necessary that gives a good projection of the organization. So does it actually show what's actually happening within the organization? Now, there's three key elements that we kind of refer to when it comes to finding uh, faithful representation. They include completeness, neutrality, and free from error. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. So with completeness, does the financial statement include all the information necessary for faithful representation of the economic phenomenon that it purports to represent? So did we include everything in the financial statement um, to give our investor a good picture of what's going on in the organization? Or did we leave expenses off the books so that it makes our net income look higher and investors are very excited, but that doesn't actually paint the actual picture that's happening within the organization where we're losing money, bleeding money. We don't know if we're going to be open for the next five months, um, and yet we're making it look like we'll be open for years to our investors. If the financial statement omits important information, then the financial statements can be misleading or incorrect thereby not being representative of what's going on in the organization. Neutrality has the, uh, neutrality is based on what we are preparing, uh, when we are preparing financial statements, is, the, is there a bias in the way we are preparing those financial statements? So are we being biased by the information that we're presenting in our financial statement? Now, every business is gonna be biased just a little bit, but we wanna reduce that bias to a point where we're not putting in bias and that we're able to give a clear cut understanding of what's going on in the organization financially. Financial statements should be free from bias, although not always, but that's what we're striving for. The last one here is free from error. So when we talk about faithful representation, we want to make sure that they're free from error. Are there errors in the books? I mean, simple as that. If there are no errors in the books or perceivably no errors in the books, and then we know that it's faithfully representing what happens in the organization. If there are errors, it doesn't necessarily reflect what's happening in the organization because that error is changing the way the financial statements look. Financial statements from external users follow US GAAP, therefore they should be free from errors, not only for from the US GAAP rules, but from what actually happens in an organization. So to kind of recap, we've got some three elements for each one of our relevance and reliabilities or faithful representation. For relevance, does it have predictive value, conformity value, and is it material or immaterial? For faithful representation, is it complete? Are we neutral when we write it? 
and is it free from error? So these are kind of the fundamental characteristics that we would expect from financial statements. And this is what we want to make sure you, as someone who may prepare the financial statements, understand to make sure that our financial statements are useful to our external users. So that is a look at relevance and faithful representation. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below like I don't know what's your favorite superhero if you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson make sure you click on this button right over here and if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available make sure you head to my website right here until next time we'll see you in the next video